What's up, YouTube? I'm here to do my prediction video for UFC 255. <clears throat> Let's start the bottom. The first fight is Luis Kosi versus Shaha. I can't say his last name. I think that this is primarily two strikers. I think Shaha is a little bit better of a grappler, but I think Kosi's just got too good a takedown defense for that to matter. And I think if this is on the feet, I think Lewis is just a much better striker. I think he hits way harder and he's way faster with his shots. And because of that, I think he's going to win by knockout probably in the first round. So I'm leaning towards Lewis Kosi. Next is Kyle Drakis versus Dustin. I can't say his last name. These guys are both primarily jiu-jitsu dudes with some okay striking. I just think Kyle looked a lot better in his debut than Dustin did. Um, Dustin was kind of, you know, he, he was keeping his own, but I feel like a large part of why he won was because that other guy broke his arm on the way down. <clears throat> I wasn't as impressed with Dustin striking as I was with Kyle's. On the ground, I think it's pretty close, but like I said, in terms of overall striking and grappling, I just think Kyle looked a little bit better in the one fight that I saw these guys in. And so I'm leaning towards Kyle to win by either decision or like a late finish in the third. Next is Alan Joban versus Jared Gooden. And to me, I think these guys are both strikers. I just think that Jared Gooden has kind of a padded record. <clears throat> I think he's fought a lot of guys with not so great records, as where Alan Joban's only been fighting pretty high level competition his entire career. Um, and because of that, I feel like even though they're both strikers, just the fact that Alan Joban's fought so many good people gives me once leans in his direction, you know what I mean? I think it'll be a pretty back-and-forth fight, but I just think Alan Joban wins at least a 29-20 decision. Next is Daniel Rodriguez versus Nicholas Dalby, and to me, this fight entirely depends on if Dalby can get it to the ground or not. I think I don't think he will be able to. I think Rodriguez's takedown defense is too good. I also think that this fight is primarily going to be a striking fight, and Rodriguez is just a much better striker. Like I said, it, it really just depends on that wrestling. And the more it's on the feet, the more it favors Rodriguez. And the more it's on the ground, the more it favors Dalby. <clears throat> I just figure, you know, like I said, I think Rodriguez has too good a takedown defense. And he's just going to outpoint Dalby for three rounds and win by a 30-27 decision. Next is Antonio Shevchenko versus Ariana Lipsky. And these chicks are both like striker jujitsu chicks. I just think Shevchenko is a little bit better at both. I think Ariana is definitely a little bit better at finishing people, whether it's by TK or submission. But I just think Shevchenko's overall striking and jiu-jitsu game are just a little bit better. And I think because of that, she's just going to edge out all three rounds and win a 30-27 decision. <clears throat> Next is Joaquin Buckley versus Jordan Wright. And to me, the biggest thing in this fight is Jordan Wright. I think he was better at 205. He looks like such a long, tall middleweight. I think that in his contender series fight, the reason why he got knocked out is probably because he cuts just way too much weight. And I think in this fight, it's going to be the same thing. I think that Joaquin is a little bit faster than Jordan Wright. I think Jordan Wright's biggest strength is that he's so long and tall. But I don't think he has the same type of speed as some of the middleweights do because, like I said, because of his size. And I think that it's going to be like his contender series fight where <clears throat> Joaquin will be able to close that distance and hit him with a big shot and probably knock him out. Like I said, I just feel like he should move back up to 205 where his speed being a little bit slower doesn't matter as much when you're in the higher weight classes. It's more about keeping the, the distance in the range and using your size to your advantage as where, you know, the lighter you go on weight, it's more about speed and technique. And because of that, I think Joaquin has the advantage in both and I think he's going to win by KO. Next is Brandon Moreno versus Brandon Royval. And this is no offense, I think Moreno should be fighting for the belt. He's a number two contender. It really makes no sense. I just want to throw that out there right off the bat. Um, to me, this is both, they're both these guys in striking jiu-jitsu dudes, just like the Antonio Shevchenko fight. And just like that one, I think that Moreno's got the advantage in striking and jiu-jitsu. I just feel like he's a little bit better at both. I think his overall striking technique, he throws harder and has better volume. I think Roy Val's more of a brawler, as where, you know, Moreno's more of like a technical brawler. And because of that, I think his, you know, even though they're both brawling, Moreno's just a little bit better at it. And once again, on the ground, you know, Roy Val's really active, but I think Moreno's got the advantage in the overall technique because they're both active, but Moreno's just better at cutting angles and shit like that on the ground better. And because of that, I don't know if Moreno will finish Roy Val, but I just think he's going to win all three rounds at the very least. And so I got Brandon Moreno winning a third 27 decision. On to the main card, the first fight is Mauricio Shogun Hua versus Paul Craig. And to me, the biggest thing in this fight is I just feel like Shogun is the better overall fighter. I think Craig's got really good jiu-jitsu and his boxing is getting better, but to me, Shogun's only thing is his age. I think that some fights he just doesn't look amazing. 
I think as long as he comes into this fight like how he did against um, Little Nog, he'll probably win. I think his overall boxing is just way better than Craig's. I think Craig just has a good reach advantage. And on the ground, I think unless Shogun gets rocked when he goes to the ground, we saw in the last fight, like, he was hurt really bad in that first round and it seemed to affect him in rounds two and three, but he's still able to get takedowns pretty easy and just control him. I think Shogun's too good of a grappler to get caught against Craig unless he's, like, really hurt. And because of that, I wouldn't be surprised if Shogun just tries to take him down right off the bat in the first and then just beat him up from there, where, so that way he doesn't take that initial damage like he did in the beginning. And because of that, I'm leaning towards Shogun to get a TKO in like the second or third round. I think if he's just a little bit smarter with how he fights and just uses his wrestling a little bit more in the beginning, so that way he can just do solid ground and pound the whole time, I think he'll win by TKO, like I said, late second, early third. Next fight is Catelyn Kukajin versus Cynthia Calvillo, and... I know a lot of people think it's weird that Kukajin's taking this fight on, you know, so quick after she got TKO'd in her last fight. But to me, that was a body shot, and it's like, as long as her body's feeling good in training, I don't think it matters as much as, like, getting knocked out to the head. Um, the, the biggest thing to me is, I think Kukajin's got huge advantages in this fight. I think she's the way better striker. I think Calvillo's the better grappler overall with the wrestling, but I mean, I meant, I think Calvillo's the better wrestler, but I think Kukajin's the better grappler. I think her overall jiu-jitsu is way better than Calvillo's. Um... I think Kukajin's also got another huge advantage in that she's not going to get tired. Like, Calvillo, you can usually gas people with her pace. She's not going to do that to Kukajin. I think Kukajin, like I said, has a huge advantage in the striking, and in the overall grappling, she's got a huge advantage, too. Calvillo's only got an advantage in the wrestling. I don't think Kukajin will take her down, but I do think she can sweep her, almost submit her on the ground. And because of that, I think Kukajin's going to win a pretty solid 30-27 decision. Next is Mike Perry versus Tim Means. This is the other thing I want to bring up. Why the hell is this fight on the main card? Why is Brandon Moreno versus Brandon Roy Val not this fight? You know what I mean? The placement on the card. This should be... Like, Brandon Roy Val versus Brandon Moreno is 2 versus 6. <laughs> the, yeah, it's no offense to Perry and Means, but they shouldn't be on the main card instead of them. Um, to me, this is just two really good strikers going at it. I think it's entirely about the range. I think that Tim Means as long as he fights long, should be able to win. We've seen a lot of the time. Perry has a hard time fighting really long strikers. We saw against Cerrone. We saw against Ponzinibbio. We saw it against um, uh, the black dude. I can't remember his name. Uh, he just fought like a week or two ago. And then um, who the hell is the other guy? Uh, oh, yeah, Alan Joban. Um, yeah, all the all the guys that have been able to keep Perry at range, he usually really struggles against. Um and I think that Tim Means is a really great striker. And if he's just fighting smart and uses long long strikes, long punches, long kicks, I don't think Perry's great at getting on the inside of those dudes. And I think Tim Means is going to outpoint him. Oh, yeah, and he also got knocked out by uh, Jeff Neal. <laughs> but there was another black dude whose name is, I'm forgetting, that just outpointed him, easy kind. Um, yeah, I think Tim Means will be able to do the same. I don't think Perry's a good enough wrestler to off-throw Tim Means' takedown defense. I think Tim Means wins a 30-27 decision. Next is Valentina Shevchenko versus Jennifer Maya, and to me, Jennifer Maya is probably the most interesting person that Shevchenko's fought, just because she's probably the most well-rounded. I think her striking and jiu-jitsu are about the same, but the thing is, I think Shevchenko's striking and jiu-jitsu are about the same, and I think she's better at both. I think that Maya, you know, is good enough to where she could potentially catch Shevchenko on the feet or on the ground, but it's one of those things where the majority of the time, if these two fought, Shevchenko just beats her on the feet, beats her on the ground. And because of that, I'm leaning towards Shevchenko. I don't know if she finishes Maya, but like I said, she's at least a step or two ahead in both the striking and the grappling. They fight in the same sense where they're both striker and jiu-jitsu chicks and they're even in both, but like I said, I think Valentina's just a couple levels higher and I think she's either going to win a dominant decision or get like a late finish in the fourth or the fifth. Finally, we got the main event, Devinson Figueredo versus Alex Perez. And I've said this before, I'm not very sold on Figueredo. I don't know why Benavides chose to never shoot for a takedown against him when his loss against UCA was just him shooting for takedowns and getting them. I feel like, you know, he, he didn't lose this other fight, but when he fought um that white guy, I can't remember his name, he was basically able to get takedowns whenever he wanted to. I feel like Devinson Figueredo, you know, even against Tim Elliott, like Tim Elliott, he got choked out with the guillotine, but he had that takedown and Figueredo just was in a position to go for the guillotine. I don't think Figueredo has the most insane takedown defense. I think that Perez has the type of style where if he keeps on him the way he does, and just even if he doesn't get takedowns, if he's just holding on to him, pushing him against the fence, and tiring him out, 
Figueredo is still a giant dude who doesn't have great cardio. I think that other than Figueredo catching Perez in the first round or two, the longer this goes, especially in rounds like 3, 4, and 5, if, if uh, Perez can get it there, the way more this fight favors him. And because of that, I'm just leaning towards Perez. I think that this is one of those things. In terms of the striking, Figueredo's definitely got the advantage. But in terms of the overall wrestling and jiu-jitsu, I mean, Figueredo does have good submissions when he's not tired. But like I said, I think the wrestling is just too big of an advantage for Perez. I think that the way longer this fight goes, the more he's going to start to dominate. Like I said, especially after round two. I think in rounds three, four, and even maybe in five, he might get a finish. And because of that, I'm leaning towards Alex Perez to get a late finish. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.